Hello inmates and welcome back to the Sublock Scorch. This is Styx. I'll be recording for you today. The prompt that was given was, you truly lack the ability to even begin comprehending how little I care about your opinion. Which is a really fun prompt. So, um, we're just gonna jump right in. Although now that I've said that, I actually want to warn you first that I had a little bit of trouble figuring out how to do the voices in this one because there are two characters who have the same voice and I wanted to separate them uh, by giving them a different different inflection intonation. So um, I don't know actually how well that's going to work out. We'll see. Hopefully you know what I mean by the end of here. If it's confusing, I'm pretty sure it works better in the written format. So just keep that in mind. You can check out the Patreon to get the written transcript. All right, here we go. The Scorch is called She Has the Wheel. <laughs> Eumenia squinted at herself in the mirror, rubbing her palms obsessively over the short stubble on her cheeks. She patted at her broad shoulders and turned around to ogle at her ass. Could you stop that? Eumenia hummed blithely. She skipped over to the closet in the corner of the room and flipped through the hangers. She wrinkled her nose at the smell. It's not that bad. Eumenia scoffed. It's not! She pulled out a plain blue shirt with a folded collar and shook it experimentally. What is this? she asked, her lips pulling back in distaste. She turned it around. This is nothing. This is what a yeast would call a shirt if it were given human form. I'm sorry, a yeast? And so loosely woven, I doubt it would last two winters, Eumenia added sourly. Is it even tailored? Of course it's not tailored. No one tailors things anymore. Eumenia made a dismissive sound and dropped the shirt daintily onto the floor. None of this will do, she said, waving expansively at the entire closet. She couldn't hear so much as feel the huff of frustration at the back of her head. Eumenia poked her head out into the hallway, then retreated back into her room, drumming her fingers thoughtfully against her lips. Sir Theodore, she said briskly, I told you it's just Todd. That's a ridiculous name. As opposed to Eumenia? Very well, Sir Todd, she said derisively. Where can I obtain a new wardrobe? My clothes are not that bad. Eumenia didn't even bother responding to that. If I hope to seduce my Charlie, she said, I need to set off these new features to my advantage. You what? Who? Everyone from your time is already... You know what? It doesn't even matter because you can't seduce someone in my body. You relinquished control of the body to me when you completed the ritual, Eumenia said reasonably. You specifically said, Bog body take the wheel, which is a terribly insensitive way to refer to someone's remains, by the way. She sniffed at the memory. Yeah, okay. Thirty minutes ago, I thought that no one could run my life worse than I was, but clearly I was wrong. I'd like the body back, please. Eumenia picked her way delicately through the mess on the carpet. There were clothes, of course, but also crinkled papers and a series of shiny, flexible wrappings, some with crumbs still inside. 
she stepped out into the hallway and discovered to her horror that there wasn't one. She could actually see the kitchen from here. There is only one room in your house, she hissed, accusatory. Apartment. Sir Todd, Eumenia said seriously, her stomach sinking. Are we destitute? No, look, I haven't been to work in a couple weeks, but they haven't fired me yet. Besides, I have enough savings for another month's rent. At that, true horror bloomed in Eumenia's chest. We are renters, she whispered. She fanned herself with a hand, which was much broader and better suited to the task than her original hands, she noted, with a sliver of smug satisfaction. We are worse than destitute. Are you done? Eumenia opened the cupboards without much hope. We do not even have flour, she said miserably. There are like 14 things in there you can eat. Eumenia poked suspiciously at the brightly colored packages on the shelves, then primly closed the cupboard doors. Come on, the ramen's really good. All right, Eumenia said. First things first, we will go to the market for meat and broccoli. I presume you have the necessary currency for such things? I don't like broccoli. You truly lack the ability to even begin comprehending how little I care about your opinion, Eumenia said peevishly. When she didn't hear a response from the back of her head, she nodded victoriously. We will go to the market, visit a tailor, and then, since we are working folk... She paused to make a face. We will go to our place of work and endeavour to raise ourselves from these desperate conditions. That's... Yeah, that's actually a good plan. I am aware. But you still can't seduce anyone in my body. Eumenia smiled a cat's smile. Oh, Sir Todd, I will seduce everyone in this body. Dear Lord. Come, let us go. I don't suppose I can stop you. Eumenia's smile widened. No, you can't. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. As far as commentary goes... I will say that I had a lot of fun playing with the idea of benevolent possession. Benevolent possession is something that happens when, um, when you're possessed, but because you share custody of the body, the, um, the invasive spirit or whatever takes care of you. For Todd, this is clearly what he was looking for sort of, when he um, told the bog body to take the wheel. I think we all kind of have... I think we all kind of wish that something else could just take over and do it for us when we can't. If the body could just pilot itself or something else could pilot it. It's hard to be in control and take care of yourself all the time. In the real world, this is something that you accomplish with uh, with support networks and community <laughs> and people who help you. But um, since this is fiction and we can do whatever we want, in this case, it's going to be um, a Victorian ghost who takes over and takes care of the nonsense that, that Todd is not capable of. So that was fun to write. And it creates a really interesting dynamic between two people, I think, when when you can't get apart from each other. Just, like, forced proximity at its most intense. Um, and there's also kind of a, a strange power dynamic here, where 
Todd is the one who technically owns the body, but Eumenia has the reins, so, um, they can't compromise as well as they might wish to. I have no idea how this situation is going to resolve for them, but I, I have a feeling it will be okay. Maybe Eumenia will find her lover who's just inexplicably alive. I don't know. She seems confident that he's around, and I trust her. The other thing that was kind of funny about this particular benevolent possession is that Eumenia, prim, proper Victorian woman, as far as we know, gets transplanted into Todd's body and doesn't experience any discomfort or dysphoria around this. And I think that's... It was fun for me to write that because bodies and identities don't always have to match, but also trying to get away from the idea that a body is even gendered at all. Like, sure, you have different characteristics and stuff, but, like, those characteristics don't have to mean one thing or another. And, uh, seeing Eumenia just not struggle with that at all, being exactly who she is and appreciating her new body, I think that was, uh, that was really fun for me. So, I think that's all I have to say. Check out the other pieces on the Patreon. If you give me just a second here, I will figure out what I prompted for the next week. Oh, I remember this prompt. Yes, I said, God forbid women do anything, which is one of my favorite jokes. So, that's a, uh, that's something to look forward to. I think Octo won again because we all know that I think Octo is hilarious. And this prompt gave itself to um, comedic takes. With that, I will let you go. Have a good week and keep that fire burning. The Cell Block Scorch is a production of StellaCore, an independent group of nerds sharing their obsessions with the world. We can be reached at thestellacore at gmail.com, through comments on your podcast platform of choice, our Instagram, Stella underscore core, and at our YouTube, also called Stella Core. Feel free to check out our other productions on our YouTube channel or our cosplays on Instagram. If you would like to support our creative endeavors, you can give a one-time tip to the ko-fi of the writer of your favorite Scorches or check out our Patreon, linked in the show notes. There, you can access the winning Scorches and episode transcripts for free or sign up for Spark Level support for $5 a month to gain access to all of the Scorch submissions.